Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, I'm going to talk about speakers and how we can use our understanding of sound to figure out how speakers work. So, first of all, what is sound? Well, sound is actually a really cool phenomenon. It's basically just a pressure wave that travels through a different medium. So, what does that actually mean? Well, so I'm going to take an example of clapping. So, simple, right? So, what's actually going on? Well, so when I clap, there's air in between my hands. And as my hands get closer, it forces that air out of the space in between my hands. So if I do that fast enough, then the air in between my hands is forced out of that gap and it knocks into other air molecules around my hands. And then that basically causes a chain reaction. And so those air molecules knock into other air molecules, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it reaches my friends in the other room and they can hear me clapping and they're like, hey, what are you doing? So that's essentially what sound is. So if you're underwater, for example, and you clap, what you're going to hear is the water molecules knocking into each other. So to take a really simple example of a box guitar that I made out of a Christmas light box, um, the rubber band is acting as the string. So when I pull the string, I hear a note. And basically what's happening in this case is that the rubber band is vibrating and because some of that vibrational motion hits air molecules, those air molecules, some of them will go into the box through the hole and then those will knock into the air molecules inside the box and that will cause the box to vibrate. And that's really what we hear because the box is way bigger than this string. So basically this acts as an amplifier for this tiny little string. That's pretty much it. Uh, that's a quick overview of sound. So how do speakers actually work? Well, a speaker is just a really sensitive and very accurate electromagnet. So uh, check out my video on electromagnets if you're new to them. Uh, in that video I explain the physics of electromagnets. So I'll just kind of give a general overview in this video. So in the case of a speaker, on the top you have a diaphragm and usually some other stuff to you know, prevent dust and other gunk from getting on the inside. And then connected to the diaphragm underneath is a wire coil and sometimes it's called a voice coil. And then the voice coil and the diaphragm are suspended and they're allowed to bounce up and down, kind of like uh, a trampoline. So when you jump on a trampoline, the trampoline doesn't go anywhere but the, the bouncy part is able to move up and down. And so that's basically what's going on here. The diaphragm is able to move up and down with the voice coil and as the diaphragm moves, it knocks into air molecules and so that's what causes the pressure wave which we hear as sound. So, so then at the bottom, there is a permanent magnet, and usually these are pretty strong, so they're also fun to do other things with. Um, and what happens when you run a current through the coil is that in one direction, it's going to be attracted to the magnet, so it's going to pull the diaphragm down, and in the other direction, it's going to be repelled, so it's going to push the diaphragm up. So I can do this with a 9 volt by hand. So in one direction, it pushes it, oh, which direction is this? Oh, oh, up. So in one direction, it pushes it up, and the other direction, it pulls it down. So yeah, super easy. So with a 9 volt and a speaker, you can start making your own avant-garde music. <laughs> All right, so super cool, pretty simple. How do we actually get sound out of it, aside from sitting here and trying to do this, you know, very, very carefully? That would probably take a really long time. So let's avoid that. Uh, usually how this is done is using an integrated circuit, or an IC for short. Um, so for example, here's a simple amplifier that I built using an IC called the LM386. And so what that does is it basically converts your input audio signal into an electrical current, and then it feeds that to the coil in your, in your speaker, and then that uh, causes tiny, tiny fluctuations very, very, very quickly. And so if you look really closely at a speaker when it's playing, you can actually see the diaphragm moving up and down, although typically this happens super, super fast, so it's kind of hard to see sometimes. 
Um, another thing that's really cool about speakers is that they also work in reverse, and a contact mic is a really good example of this. So a contact mic can be used as an input. You can talk into it, and if you have the right circuit, you can actually read out the audio signal. Or you can use it as an output. You can feed a current to it, just like I did with this battery, and you can get a little sound out of it. So that's pretty much it. Not too complicated. So I'll leave you with a question, and that is, if you're in a vacuum, and maybe with an oxygen mask so you can breathe, and you clap, what do you hear? And uh, just to clarify, a vacuum is a room where there's no air. So what happens if you clap? To answer last week's question, I asked, um, what happens if you have a generator and you rotate the axle in the opposite direction? So since the uh, Lorentz force or the electromagnetic induction works in both directions, you'll basically just get the same thing. So um, if you're measuring the voltage output on the generator and you switch the rotation of the axle in the generator, you'll see a negative voltage, which basically just means that the current is now flowing in the opposite direction. As long as you're spinning it at the same rate and it's the same generator, you'll get the same voltage and current output. So that's pretty much it. Please let me know if you have any questions about that explanation or about sound and speakers. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.